This is a video about how I patched a large hole in my Hawk 20 day boat. As is usual in my videos, the process is easy enough to understand once you know how, of course. Obviously, if you know how to do this, this is a very basic video, so probably isn't for you. But if you've never attempted something like this before, it might just give you the confidence to have a look at it and have a go. I've never attempted something this large before and was a little nervous about it. I inquired at local glass fibre suppliers about what they thought were the best materials and materials. I started by taking out as much of the rotten material as I thought safe while leaving a reasonable width around the edges for support for the new patch. Once the bad area was tidied up, I needed to make some sort of template. I initially used thickish cardboard so that it would stay reasonably in place until it was complete. I then took the cardboard template out and used that to make a stiffer one out of a single piece of plywood. This was to make sure that the piece of plastic board I was using as a filler would fit in the space without having to bend it, etc. I was informed that a recycled PET material made by Armacell was a good choice to use for a large area such as this because it will not rot if it gets wet. The specs can be seen here on the screen and links to details about this material will be in the description. Without some form of support or backing, such as GRP, the foam is in fact quite brittle and will break apart without much effort. I actually managed to break a piece just by dropping it on a hard surface. And this is a piece with just two layers of 450 gram uh, chop mat. And if we try and force it this way, it doesn't break. I mean, if we try and force it that way, obviously the foam is going to break, but eventually there will be another layer of GRP on here, but it's quite, I mean, even bending it right round, putting stress into the GRP, but it's not breaking. Now, this is just a crude experiment. I've just got two bits of this, one either side, and if I try and if that was a single bit of foam and it was glued in the middle, I can't bend it that way and I can't bend it that way. So it's very tough. I'm liking it. So that the plastic foam board would eventually be supported on both sides, I had to lay up glass on the back before it was installed. To achieve a neat edge around the patch when it was completed, I cut out the foam board and the glass fibre bigger than the final size of the template. Initially, I began measuring the resin by weight rather than by volume and then adding 2% hardener. For later layups, however, I simply measured by volume instead and this seemed to work, work out just as well. Once the resin had been thoroughly mixed, I applied a layer directly onto the foam board before any glass fibre chop mat. It is easier to force glass fibres into the resin than it is to ensure the underside of the mat is fully soaked if attempting the other way around. I used a roller to make sure the glass fibres were fully submerged into the resin. A second coat of resin was applied. A second and final layer of glass fibre chop mat was applied. And again, a roller was used to force the fibres in to make sure they're fully soaked. The foam board has holes in it which allow the resin to soak through and get a firm grip on it. To prevent the board getting glued to my workbench I raised it up on spikes while it dried. Once the resin had set overnight I cut out the actual shape required using just a sharp knife. Uh, after that I then applied a white top coat layer and waited for that to go off. Around the area of the patch there are obvious holes where I'd obviously been a bit too rough with the sanding tools. These would need to be filled and I used a two-part filler uh, which goes by the the number 1186 PA and this used the same hardener as the resin and the top coat. Here I did use weight rather than volume as the uh, filler is more like a paste than a fluid. 
to help the patch adhere around the hole i applied quite a bit of filler around the edges to try and create as level a surface as possible once the patch was in place there are still gaps around the edges and i would use uh, more filler to fill these and create a fillet or a, a round smooth area before trying to apply the grp once the filler was mixed with hardener i decided to put it in a plastic bag which would then act as a piping bag to help force it into the smaller gaps around the patch once the filler was all in place i used reversed clamps to apply external pressure on the patch to ensure it stayed in place while the filler hardened to avoid getting chop mat or tape stuck on my gloves during layup i decided to cut lengths of tape and pieces of chop mat to fit the patch and around the edges before measuring any resin before using the resin in a confined space i changed the filters on my dust mask to a set of vapor ones uh, i've not used them before but i found them to be most effective and well worth the extra money as with the back side of the patch which was laid up earlier i started by applying a liberal layer of resin to all the surfaces before pushing in tape around the edges once the tape was covered in resin I made sure that there was still plenty on the large patch area and then laid in some chop mat. After each layer of resin, I pushed the plastic tape or chop into it using a roller and then recovered with resin. Some of the patch was hidden underneath and behind other sections of the boat and I couldn't quite get the chop or tape to lay flat. Once the resin had cured enough, I used a mirror and a Dremel to patch up and make good. Once I was satisfied with the layup as a whole, I applied a good thick layer of top coat to provide uh, waterproofing.